Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 337th episode of The Simple Sophisticate, and welcome to The Simply Luxurious Life's seventh annual French Week. It all began yesterday, and it runs this entire week on the blog, where two posts are shared every single day, and there are six giveaways that are exclusive to top tier members to enter. All of them are tied to the French culture in one way or another. And for podcast listeners, that means there are two new episodes that will be shared this week, and this is the first one. So what are we talking about today? We are going to talk about French details, everyday French details that I incorporate into my routine, and you may be inspired to incorporate in your own way as well. But before I get to the main topic of our episode, this week's petit plaisir is an everyday detail that helps me to slow down and savor the day. And I'll share with you what that is as I learned about it just this past spring. And stay tuned as throughout today's episode, I will be sharing with you what two of the giveaways are um, that I'm going to be giving away this week. And uh, you might want to just pop on over and enter them just to give yourself a chance to welcome these items into your everyday life. Now, you all know if you've been listening to this podcast for a long time, and maybe visiting the blog as well, that since the beginning of the blog in 2009 and with the podcast when it began in 2014, I have regularly shared French-inspired ideas to incorporate into our everyday routines. And in fact, I created an entire bundle for just this topic. So be sure to check out podcast bundle number two for many of those particular episodes. And the more I observe and savor how those ideas that I've incorporated into my life, those choices have have elevated my life as they become more habituated, they've matured in many ways, I guess you could say marinated, so to speak, their way into my way of living. I have discovered how consciously welcoming such details deeply affect a positive change in how I move through my days. So initially when I maybe started some of these, yeah, I noticed that it was wonderful to savor a chocolate truffle at the end of the day. As I've been doing that over the years, I've been doing that for over 10 years now, what I've realized that there's more than just the taste of that love, luscious truffle. It's the practice of holding myself calmly and still in the moment. It's looking forward to it and appreciating it without wanting more. So it's a, it's a whole other level that after time starts to really remind me that, oh, on the surface, they may be great, but they're even deeper at a different and more deeply, deep, deep level under the surface. For example, um, let me give you a few more. The muscle of savoring is strengthened. And I, and I do, it's a, it is a muscle and, 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 and some may call it your mindfulness muscle. I think it's also a savoring muscle, the ability to do and to appreciate and to not ask for more, 
but appreciate what you have. And I see more readily minute details to appreciate, whether in my own home life or when I'm out and about. And it all began with some of these choices that I decided to welcome into my life that were inspired by the French culture. I now more easily, for example, and without apology, delight and exude my excitement without editing because it is not others' approval I am seeking when, for example, I get a good night's sleep that is in large part enabled by breathable sheets, a la linen. And we'll talk about that today as well. Or when a flower blooms from a seed sown years ago, sitting next to an herb or a berry, planting, inspired by the idea of cultivating a potager. Those three practices were inspired by time and and opportunities I've had with the French culture. And after more of a decade of welcoming such changes into my life, There are many that remain and feel a part of me as though I could not imagine living any other way because they simplify as well as add a touch of luxury to my life as well as functioning just as I had hoped it would and then some. While some on this list I share today may not be exclusive to the French culture, it is in my exploring the French culture where I was introduced to this particular idea. So for example, number one on the list You'll note that this is not exclusive to the French culture at all, but it is actually where my courage and confidence to do this began. It began in France. Whenever we come across a way of living that speaks to us in whichever culture we may find ourselves, it only serves to deepen our appreciation for said culture. And our affection seems to organically strengthen and then take root, inspiring us then to pursue or explore that culture even more, which is what it has done for me and perhaps you as well in your own unique pursuits. So let's take a look at this list. And if you are reading the post, uh, the show notes along with this, you'll notice that the show notes are not going to contain all of the detail we're going to speak about today on the episode. You'll definitely want to keep tuning into this audio uh, episode because we'll talk about so much more, but I do provide all the links that are mentioned in this, in this episode on the show notes. So number one, since I alluded to it just a second ago, is a floppy straw sun hat for gardening or visiting the market. So the story goes for me, and again, this is certainly not an idea that's exclusive to the French culture, Um, but for me, it was when I was in Provence for the first time, and it was in July, and so it was very warm, and the sun was very bright and right, right above us and just brilliantly warm. You absolutely needed a sun hat to stroll in the markets, not just sunglasses, not just sunscreen. You would bake, you would you would sweat far too much. And um, so I quickly uh, picked up a straw sun hat that was not that expensive at one of the markets. And I still have it to this day. In fact, it is my gardening sun hat. I wear it every time I'm out in my garden in the summertime. And it is not perfect, but it's perfect for me. And I love it. With that said, um, that same trip, I remember this was before I got this particular sun hat, I remember I was at the cooking class in Provence and one of the fellow students had this beautiful sun hat and they kept saying to me, Shannon, you need a sun hat. I was like, I know, but I didn't know where to get it. We were in a very small village and the market wasn't open until the next day or two days later. But it was in that moment I realized if I'm going to enjoy this culture, I've got to get a hat. Um, So it wasn't about fashion. Of course, I'm going to look for one that I feel comfortable in, but I needed it for functionality. And so I now have um, a market hat that I wear uh, when I go to the market here in Bend, or when I go on walks with Norman in the evening. It's different than my gardening hat. It's not as large brimmed. It's a it's a Panama style hat. In fact, it's called the Provence hat. And I've been including it recently in the this and that posts and outfit posts, you may have already heard about it. And I've linked to it It's actually made in Britain. But um, The idea is hats in the summertime are not for style alone. In fact, predominantly they are for protection so that you can enjoy being outside in the gorgeous weather and environment that France or wherever you are um, is and offers at that particular time of year. So that's one detail. I'm very rarely outside in the summertime without my straw hat. Number two is Brocante finds and welcoming them into my home decor. 
Now, my first percant was in Provence, in vaison la Romaine, and I completely stumbled upon this percant, which is akin to an upscale flea market. Um, all different ranges of options of, of, of consigned secondhand antique finds are there. And in fact, it's where I found my copper key tea kettle that is on the cover of my new book, but also many of you know, you see it in my cooking shows. But brocante is, it's just, it's a wonderful opportunity if you are a treasure hunter to find all sorts of items that hold a history that just want to find a new home for someone that appreciates them. And there's all levels of finishes, um, pristine, to patina, to, you know, it just it runs the gamut. And I should share some pictures in um, the show notes, but also a link to the five lessons I learned or five tips I learned when I visited my first broke hunt in that summer of 2018. And of course, there is the most famous one in the 18th arrondissement in Paris. And I have written a post about visiting that as well. But I bring these items into my home and they serve more than just an aesthetic value. They serve a memory, but they also serve some sort of purpose. And um, because knowing that no one has the exact same thing as you do, likely or at all, and that you found it somewhere special on a special trip or from a special dealer, um, even if you can't travel to France, I love shopping um cats, uh, rabbit hill, um, pop-ups. They're the first Saturday of each month. Um, she goes to the brocants, um, pri- prim- primarily in Normandy area and Brittany area. And she offers copper, all sorts of wonderful copper that they, they refinish. But I have picked up as well as some copper. I just recently found a big ceramic jug. Um, I've found utensils and some of them are brand new, but um, because they make them or they source them from French um, artisans, but so many of them are, bro- are brocante finds or from Sharon Santoni. She has a shop as well online and she also um, includes some of those brocante finds in her My Stylish French box. So even if you can't travel to France and you if you love the French culture and you want to add some of those touches, there are sources and sites to find them and I can't tell you how lovely it is to see them in my house. They may, may mean nothing to anyone else when they walk in my house and that is absolutely fine. All right, I will include links to that. Oh, and by the way, if you are if you are um, a weekly or monthly newsletter subscriber, which is a free subscription, this week there is a giveaway that is exclusive to monthly and weekly um, newsletter subscribers. And it is, it is something from Sharon Santoni. So you want to make sure you subscribe to that newsletter before this Thursday night or from Friday morning, because it goes out early Friday morning, um, because there will be a giveaway and it is something from Sharon Santoni. All right. So that's number two, um, welcoming brocante finds into my home decor. The third French detail that I've welcomed into my everyday life is focusing on skincare and thus using minimal makeup. Now I've never been one to use true foundation. I've always used just tinted foundation. But I began to realize through my exploration through the French culture and um, the effortless beauty that seems to be um, a priority in France is the idea of focusing on the basically the foundation of who you are. So thus taking care of what you have, which is your skin. So how do you take care of that? And when you do that, there's no need for makeup. And if there is makeup, it's minimal. I've written a couple of posts on this. And in fact, episode 258, I share 22 French beauty secrets worth the investment inspired by the book, Ageless Beauty, the French way. And, uh, since I'm no longer teaching and it's not because I've left teaching so much as I've become more confident to to let go of some makeup. I very rarely wear any even tinted foundation anymore. I very rarely have eyeliner on and I try to really focus on the, the the skincare products and, and investing in high quality ones that work for my skin 
and they do go the distance. And I've shared those items in two different posts. I've shared it in one post titled 13 French Booty Products I Love and Recommend. And then if you read that post, at the end of that post, I've shared all the products I use, whether they're French or not, um, that I've found in my 40s. And really, it doesn't matter that I'm in my 40s or not. These products would be great at any age that I've found to be worth the investment and definitely something that I've seen um, produce the results I want. Clear skin, glowing skin, healthy skin, fewer lines, um, so that my beauty um, shines through and yours does as well. So that's one other everyday routine and French inspired detail that has enhanced um, my confidence and also um, lets my true beauty shine. That's number three. Number four is, I mentioned this a little bit in the introduction, but linen everywhere. Linen sheets, linen clothing, linen curtains. I've done that all. I have them all. (laughs) I cannot recommend linen more. Number one, it's sustainable. If you're looking, if you're someone who is very serious about diving into a sustainable living, but wants to be comfortable as well, linen sheets, linen clothing, uh, linen scarves. I love linen scarves. Number one, they last. That's the sheet component, especially. You're not going to go through these sheets in a couple years, even five, 10 years. If they're made well with quality linen from France or Belgium, they will last you decades. I have antique linen sheets that I found in France for not that much, 35 euros at that particular time. And they are still with me. And they were antique when I got them. And I've had them for now four years. And they were very old when I got them. So I decades and decades old. Um, I've gotten new linen sheets um, as well. Um, But I I, I cannot recommend linen sheets more. I sleep in them all year round. They keep me warm in winter and they keep me cool in summer. It sounds as though that's impossible, but it's true. They can and they do. They're breathable. They're natural. And uh, they're, they're very durable. Um, so I've included a post I wrote, um, from my trip to France and I talk all about the fields, the history and why it truly is a luxurious fabric, French linen. As far as clothing in the summertime, I predominantly wear linen clothing, whether it's dresses, shorts, or tops. It's breathable, it's comfortable, and it allows also protection. So I wear, will wear long sleeve shirts when I'm out in the garden, um, but they're all linen. And so they're very breathable and I don't get hot and I don't get a sunburn. So I like to do that. I have linen shorts and um, I have a lot of linen dresses. Again, very comfortable. They hang well and uh, they still look very nice. So that's one detail that I've incorporated and I cannot imagine doing without. And this is the other thing I often would see a lot of men um, wear scarves in the summertime and they're wearing linen scarves. Um, Very stylish, but they keep you cool at the same time, protect your skin when you're out in the hot heat. All right. That's number four. Number five is to keep my hairstyle simple and not worry about perfection. So I allow it to be a little bit looser and because I'm focusing on ensuring my hair is healthy, you know, that's, that's the focal point. And, 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 and even when I put it up, cause I do put my hair up quite a bit, it's in a chignon. So I just use three large, um, bobby pins and put them up and it's never a perfect or tight chignon. It's just one that keeps it out of my face and it's loose. I, I've been one of those people that, you know, you see those perfect pictures of hair and, and whatnot as you're growing up in the magazines. Again, this is pre-internet. And you think, oh, it's got to be possible to get those. It was impossible for me to have perfect hair. So eventually I stopped trying and I've just made sure my hair is healthy, that it complements my skin tone with my highlights and um, I let it be messy. I use dry shampoo and don't wash it every day and get it, get it cut or trimmed um, in regular frequency that it still looks healthy. And, um, and then I forget about it and I focus on just enjoying the day. And I think that's something the French are really good at. They, they don't fuss over their hair, but it's clear that they know that it makes a difference. They're not going to stress themselves out over it and let it be what it is. Um, so getting a real good haircut for your, your face shape and your lifestyle and then letting it just be, uh, whether up or down. So that's number five. Number six, I will get to in a moment, but I have an advertiser I want to introduce you to, and I'll be right back on the other side.
Bomba's mission is simple. Make the most comfortable clothes ever and match every item sold with an equal item donated. So when you buy Bomba's, you are also giving to someone in need. Bombas designed their socks, shirts, and underwear to be the clothes you can't wait to put on every day. There's a pair of Bomba socks for everything you do. They come in tons of options, made with sweat-wicking yarns, which means your feet stay cool while the rest of you works up a sweat. Bombas underwear is also breathable and fits so well it feels as though you're wearing nothing at all in a very good way. And did you know that socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the three most requested clothing items at homeless shelters? That's why Bombas donates one for every item you buy. So far, Bombas customers, like you, have helped donate over 50 million items of essential clothing. As a simple, sophisticate listener, go to bombas.com slash sophisticate and get 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash sophisticate for 20% off. That's bombas.com slash sophisticate. Welcome back. Let's dive back in and share the remaining five items, everyday French-inspired details I incorporate into my life, and you might want to as well. Number six is en croissant on the weekend. So when we think of France, we may think of croissants. And while it would be lovely to enjoy a croissant every day, even the French don't do that. Um, But what I do is enjoy un croissant, so one croissant, on Sundays. And creating that ritual is something that enables me to look forward to my Sunday breakfast, which I enjoy after a long walk with Norman, and I sit down with all the papers from the weekend and just savor. And I look forward to it, yes, and I also savor it when I'm engrossed in it, But I also feel good because I'm not overindulging. I'm just indulging enough that it's not a guilty pleasure whatsoever. Um, I have a recipe and I make my own croissants and um, then I freeze them and then pull one out Saturday night and put it in the refrigerator to defrost and then it's ready to proof in the oven for three hours while we're walking. And then I come home and bake it for 20 minutes and it's, it's ready to go. And just having the homemade croissant is a simple pleasure I can give myself. And I only have to make a croissant recipe every other month, maybe every three months, um, because there's enough in the batch. But uh, it, it makes it special and it enables me to stay home and saves money at the same time. I, I have been doing this for so long. Um the making of the croissants I started to do in 2018 and I've never looked back. And of course, whenever you're in France, just being reminded of what they taste like is, is quite special. So that's number six, uh, on croissant on the weekend. Number seven is to enjoy a French tea or French tea. And there are many French tea houses and uh, tea salons um, and tea varietals and brands. Uh, Mirage Frere is a popular one in the States. And today's Petit Plaisir, in fact, is going to introduce you to one more brand that you might want to put on your list because they do ship to the States. And I was recently introduced to it myself this past spring. So I'll wait to get to the end of this episode to share with you that brand. But I enjoy um, tea from Palais de Thé, their Montan Bleu. Um, I also enjoy their um, herbal teas, Chasson uh, teas, and uh, enjoy those in the evening now. I used to have black tea in the evening. Now I move that up to my tea time or for when I'm working in the morning, and then I have my um, my herbal teas in the evening. So I don't have any caffeine in the evening. But there is just an art that the French... Um, offer in their teas. And there are many other countries that make amazing teas, as we all know. But we're talking about the French culture. We cannot forget their tea. That's number seven. Number eight, let's speak about decor for a second, is to mix and match favorite decor aesthetics. Now, in episode 228, I shared 21 Parisian decor ideas from Inez de la Fressange. She wrote a new book um, a handful of years ago and it inspired an entire podcast episode, episode 228. What I've found is that you all know that I welcome in the arts and crafts movement. So William Morris's idea is the English cottage. But I also am welcoming in both Parisian elegance and provincial country decor. 
So there are two different elements from the French culture, um, traditional decorating styles, not modern. I don't bring in a lot of modern, but that's the thing. That's what I love about Inez de la Fersange's book. She brings in a lot of different modern ideas and marries them with more traditional ideas and does a beautiful job in this book. But when you, again, have a culture that speaks to you and you've stayed in different rentals, vacation rentals, or seen different museums or hotels, it's what speaks to you. And if you can bring in those details and figure out how they can work together without overwhelming each other, you know, it takes time, but it pays off because it's done intentionally and with a lot of thought and it holds within it memories for you. So for example, in my primary bedroom, I brought in a lot of Parisian elegance, traditional Parisian elegance. So I brought in um, linen sheets and pillowcases, um, as well as a bolster or a traversin, as we talked about in last year's uh, French week, the long bolster um, that is traditional to the French culture to have on the bed. And then I also have just very loose hanging curtains that are somewhat sheer, but also provide warmth in the winter. Um, but they don't black anything out. And I've just found in the French culture, especially in Provence, um, sheer fabrics that move in the wind as you open the window. There's a bit of a romantic quality to that without having a lot of print. And these don't have print. They're solid wool curtains. And that's where I drew inspiration um, from some vacation rentals that I stayed in Provence. As well as in my primary bathroom, I have... Um, hexagon shaped tile that was inspired from the traditional terracotta hexagon shaped tile. I don't have terracotta color because that would not have worked with my theme. But when I look down and I see the hexagon tile, that is what I think of. I think of Provence because that was in some of the places that I stayed. And so I'm bringing in these elements that remind me of what I loved and those trips that I took. And one more detail in the primary bathroom that was entirely inspired from Provence were linen curtains. Um, over the window and they are tall and they drape just above the floor. They're not lined so light can come through. But when I stayed in um, this lovely vacation rental, I did a detailed post on it. Um, I'll link it in the show notes. The owners were from Amsterdam and then they bought this uh, Pied-de-Terre in Provence in the Golden Triangle in this little hamlet and they completely refurbished it. And uh, there were elements of, of Amsterdam in this house as well as Provence. And one of the details where they always, they just simply used linen um, tablecloths and attached them via snaps and then a hook to the rod. And they just added a very rustic, casual, but elegant provincial touch. And I've always remembered that. And I wanted to bring that into the bathroom. So when I'm soaking It's really breezy and therapeutic. So those are just a few ideas to bring into um, your aesthetics. Mix and match favorite decor aesthetics. Don't think you just have to stick with one. You don't have to have all Parisian elegance everywhere. You can share, let let these aesthetics share the, the, the spotlight. Number nine are the famous Savon de Marseille soaps. And in fact, they were Petit Plaisir for episode 321. So you may remember we spoke about those um, earlier this year in January. Now, the traditional Marseille cubes of soap for decades, uh, going back all the way to the 19th century, were solely a green um, color. And they were made with at least 72% olive oil. Now there are a variety of different colors, um, as many of you probably know. But there are some key tenets to ensure tradition is adhered to and that you are receiving the product as it was designed and why it offers the benefits it does. Number one, there are no animal products being used. There are no artificial fragrances, no artificial coloring, no preservatives are ever used. And in fact, the traditional French soap must only contain four ingredients, vegetable oils, water, salt, and soda. And pure Marseille soap is made with organic olive oil from Provence. Now, this is something that since last fall, um, when I found a source where I could buy mine directly from France without breaking the bank, um, I've been only using these soaps in the shower. I don't have any more body wash. I don't have any other soap 
for cleansing whatsoever in the shower. I do have my um, facial washes in my um, medicine cabinet that I use, but when I'm in the shower, I just use this for my face. And I also um, find it to be very um, moisturizing and it looks beautiful in the shower. It doesn't make a mess. There are all different sizes you can get. You can get the 100 gram cube. You can get the 200 gram cube. You can get one that looks like a, tra a traditional um, oval shape of soap. You can get the bars. There's so many different shapes and sizes. But I order from Sevenier de la Lejon, and I have linked to it on the Petit Plaisir post, and I'll link to that post in the show notes. But if you would like your own, be sure to explore the giveaway that is now on the blog for this year's French week. I'm giving away two cubes of soap to four lucky winners. I've already shipped it from France to me. And so you will get them directly from me, but they were just made and just, um, they were just sent from France. And, um, and you can discover why these are pretty special um, again, not only do they look good, but they are very functional, they are sustainable, and um, you don't have any extra packaging or whatnot. Um, I cannot recommend them more highly. Anyway, that's what I incorporate into my everyday life. And um, they're very inexpensive. If you buy them uh, without the shipping, they're just under five euros each. And as we know, the euro is almost equivalent to a dollar now. So it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful time to buy them. So again, be sure to stop by the blog and enter the giveaway. You have to become a top tier member to enter the giveaways. But again, four people will be winning these soaps this year. So that's number nine, the Sivon de Marseille soaps. Number 10 is to grow a potage. I mentioned a little bit in the introduction that I am trying to incorporate the ideas of a potage, which is growing your vegetables and your berries and fruits within and amongst your flowers and your cutting garden as well. And it works, it's a, there's a lot of benefits for, to do this, for doing this. It's very similar to having a cottage garden as well. They're very similar in their reason for doing this. Number one, they help each other out um, with regards to bees and pollinators and uh, insects that um, eat the bugs you don't want, such as aphids. But it also provides a beauty that is a functional beauty because you right you're going out and you're eventually going to pick those berries but they first will have blossoms but when they have the berries you still want flowers and so then you also have your cut flowers there or your perennials amongst them and um a couple years ago i wrote a post sharing 10 plants herbs berries vegetables and flowers i am growing in my potager and you can too. I need to do an updated post on my garden this year. So look for that in September on the blog. But having a potage with my herbs right outside my kitchen door. And then I have, for example, this year I've added hollyhocks um, and they are next to my blackberries. Um, they sit near my tomatoes and I have basil next to my tomatoes. Um, my rhubarb provides the beauty of its strong, elegant structure, but it's right amongst my napita or my catmint and my Carl Forsters. So they're all working together. They're not separated. And I love that because number one, if you have a small space, but number two, it just, it makes sense. Uh, they can, they can complement each other so wonderfully throughout the summer. Um, and also provide um, help for each other. Anyway, so that's another way that I welcome the French culture, their idea of having a potage for a garden into my everyday life. However you choose or are inspired to welcome the French culture into your everyday life, let your curiosity guide you. Now, not everything that I've shared today may speak to you, and that's okay. But Whatever speaks to you when you are immersed in the French culture, trust it, follow it, and welcome it into your life wherever you call home. And the depth that you're bringing into your sanctuary is more than just the aesthetic value. It's the memories, it's the functionality, it's, it's what it brings to your life that nothing else could. And I think over the years, you'll find that it helps you savor and appreciate and hold yourself calmly in the present. 
I am confident you will discover even more appreciation of the everyday moments and routines and your savoring muscle will become quite strong. Thank you for stopping by and tuning in today and be sure to explore all of the posts and the second podcast episode that will be shared this week during the Simply Luxurious Lives 7th Annual French Week going on now through August 21st. And now we have a petit plaisir to get to. It's a new favorite tea of mine from France, and I think you will enjoy it as well. So the new French tea I've welcomed into my house was introduced to me when I was in Paris this past April. And we walked into the vacation rental and they had put um, a welcome basket on the table with praline truffles. They had Laudry macaroons. Oh. And they also had tea from De Montfrères. And I had never heard of this brand. I know, I know, but I'd, I'd heard of Mirage Frère and Play de Té. And when I saw this bag, this beautiful black bag of tea, loose tea, I thought, oh, it's Mirage Frère. No, it was De Montfrères. And De Montfrères tea began way back in 1692 with two brothers, as, it, as you may guess from the title, the Frère meaning brother or brothers. And it was in the 1960s that they began their first flavoring of teas. Now they have tea houses throughout Paris. And um, the good news is you can order them online as well. And they ship internationally for not that expensive of a shipping fee, com considering the fact that you're shipping from France. And they have so many varietals. It's absolutely near overwhelming, but I have their Earl Grey um, Goutte Russe, and it is a bergamot tea, and it has a little bit of sweet orange and Italian lime in it. Um, but again, it's just another variety, it's just another tea brand from France that you might want to explore. They also have the beautiful black tins if you buy the tins, but you can also get the black bags, and you can also get the individual tea, sh tea sachets as well. So this week's petit plaisir is De Montfrère's Té. And I'll provide a link to their site on the petit plaisir post in the show notes. I hope you've enjoyed this week's petit plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Now, a second episode, as I mentioned before, will air this week, this Thursday, episode 338. And this one's going to be very specific for you travelers out there. It's taking the Eurostar. And I'm going to share all my tips and experiences of what I've learned. I've traveled from Paris to London and London to Paris. And I just did it recently here this this um, spring. And I also did it quite a few years ago. And, I'll, and I've, I've traveled in different classes as well. So I'll be sharing with you all of, of what I've learned in episode 338, taking the Eurostar. And the Petit Plaisir is a film... I think you're going to thoroughly enjoy with a wonderful actress that you may have seen in previous films I've talked about and shared here on the blog and the podcast. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to stop by the blog if you want to check out even more French inspired content and enter the giveaways. There are six this week and I'll be back on Thursday with a brand new episode. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique Simply Luxurious Life, be sure to pick up my first two books. Each are available in hardback, paperback, ebook and at audible for audio listening the first is titled choosing the simply luxurious life and the second living the simply luxurious life and look for a third book to be released in the spring of 2022 readers can now join the more intimate simply luxurious life international community by becoming members of the blog which provides ad-free unlimited reading and access to exclusive content such as each month's a cup of moments video chat tours of my home le papillon the regular monthly post, What Made Me Smile, and Saturday Ponderings, as well as the opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during French and British weeks. 
To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, and the cooking show, as well as receive exclusive news and an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart your new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's free monthly newsletter, which arrives on the last day of each month. And there's a weekly newsletter, a favorite of listeners and readers, which is also free and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cup of tea or a cup of morning coffee and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Thank you for tuning in today and look for two new episodes of this podcast each month on the first and third Monday. To be alerted to new episodes and when they become available, follow on Instagram, the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, and only the news about this show will be shared. Until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.